Well, I'd like to begin with a question. This is somewhat rhetorical, but if you feel so led to respond, you certainly may. How do we hear God? How do we hear God speak? This, oh, go ahead. In scripture, absolutely. I was going to get to that last, but we can start there. Well, we do hear God speak in scripture, but the question, how do we hear God speak, is one that we could ask at any time. It's something that we could revisit in our spiritual journeys at any point. But in case it isn't something you've been wondering about today in particular, I wanted to begin with that question, to ask that, to get everybody to start thinking about how we hear God. And I love the fact that immediately you went straight to Scripture, because that is one of those places that we hear God speak. Now, there are other ways that we hear God and interact with God in, in our lives. Maybe you've experienced an epiphany, where you actually experience God speaking directly to you. Maybe as you're going through your daily lives, your journey each day, you experience God speaking. You hear God in the world around you, in beauty, in other people, in love. Maybe you hear God speaking through music or through movies or art. Someone said to me recently, they completely are positive that they experienced God through healing. Someone was healed in a way that they just didn't expect. Now, somebody who doesn't look at the world that way may say, you know, the wound wasn't that bad. It naturally healed that way. That was the body doing its work. But the person who witnessed this saw the person who was hurt. It was her child. And she said, I can't believe it. It's a miracle how quickly the wound is healing. You can hear God speak through healing. But it's also power, possible, and, and indeed powerful, to hear God speak through death. The person who has been suffering and suffering and suffering, and they're called home and experience his mercy and grace in that moment. These flowers are another example. We can look at flowers as symbols, as an enactment of the parables of, of the sower and the seeds that we heard earlier. And when we, we look at flowers as these kinds of symbols, they can speak to us about God, and God can speak through them. <clears throat> In the later service this morning, we'll be celebrating baptism. And whenever we do celebrate baptism, I invite everyone who's present to reflect back on their own baptism and what the waters meant to them. And in that moment of reflection, it is possible in hearing the water splash to experience and see God. That's how it's such a sacred moment. Now, Scripture course, is another way that we can experience and hear God. Books of prophets, like Isaiah, where I read this morning, are a powerful example and a significant place to hear from God, because they reflect a particular person sharing what they've experienced God saying to them with a particular people at a particular time in a particular context. It, it gets pretty specific very quickly, and can feel far removed from us because, of course, we're not in that context. The prophet isn't speaking directly to us. However, as archaic as they can seem, especially some of the prophets in the Hebrew Bible, they're a part of our Bible. The prophecies are a part of Holy Scripture. And so when we read it, or when we hear it read, we can apply it to our lives and listen for God speaking to us through the prophet. This passage begins with, The Lord gave me 
the tongue of a teacher. It begins with a gift. And when we apply these verses to our lives, when we look at them in this way as God speaking through Scripture, we can take this word, the Lord gave me the gift of the tongue of a teacher, and we can apply it to our lives. Now what do we want to hear when we go to God? This is another question, because sometimes we know exactly what we want to hear when we go to God. So often we have it already figured out. We know the answer before we ask. I see some smiles which indicate some of your prayers have sounded a lot like some of my prayers in the past. Oh God, let this happen. Open this door. If it's your will, wink, wink, because <laughs> we know it's your will. I mean, God, this is just a formality, right? We're just working out the details right now. I'm going to ask. I'm going to be very contrite and, and you know, bend to whatever your will is. But we know. <clears throat> it's like a child asking uh, mom for more dessert. The child knows the answer they want to hear. There's no, you know, ambiguity. There's no question about it. Can I have some more? Can I have a second helping? The answer, of course, the child wants to, sure, honey, absolutely, help yourself. Yes, dear, go get your, get it yourself so that you know how much you want to get. <laughs> Sometimes, though, just like the child who goes to mom and asks for more dessert, we go to God, we know the answer, but we ask anyway, yeah, this is your will, right, God? You, you want me to do this. The answer is, no, you'll get a tummy ache. And we don't want you to have a d divine tummy ache. In this passage, although it begins with the gift of a tongue of a teacher, it quickly turns to the animating of the Holy Spirit, the Lord God giving voice to the one who's asking. Morning by morning, he wakens me, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. Wait a second. Who had the gift to teach in the opening of this passage? Who was it who was given the gift? The prophet was given. So if we're hearing the verses as if they're spoken to us, we receive that gift of the tongue of a teacher. We receive that gift of being able to speak the way God has directed us to speak. However, it doesn't go from there in verse 4 to then say, so I told everyone what they should do. So I told everyone what they needed to hear. The prophet turns away from speech as quickly as having claimed the gift of having received the tongue of a teacher. It's like he's saying, I'm not speaking my message. <clears throat> now, I've heard people say that before as a tool. You know, use that. This isn't, I'm just doing what I feel like God has directed me to do. That's great if it's true. If it's not, Again, that's between God and the one who's representing that message. The prophet turns away from speaking. I didn't speak my message. Because part of the gift of the tongue of the teacher is the ability to stop and listen and be open to God's directing. The Lord opened my ear, the verse says. And how much better is it to speak when we are being led by the Holy Spirit, when it is the Holy Spirit who animates and directs and guides our speech. But the Holy Spirit can't direct and animate our speech, can't give us voice to speak if we shut ourselves off and don't listen. If we stop there in verse 4 and say, Aha! We've been given the voice of the teacher. We've been given the ability to speak and to, to share this message. And then don't read any further. Because the rest of the verses are about listening and about doing what God directs. When we don't listen, we can't be directed by the Spirit. We direct ourselves and, well, if you were listening just a second ago when I read the verses, that's not how this passage goes. This is a passage from Isaiah's servant songs. The, the answer is in the title. They're servant songs. They're not 
bold prophet speaking out a message that the prophet wanted to share for his own gain songs. They're servant songs. In Isaiah 42, we're introduced to this, to this servant, Isaiah's servant, not his person who helped him, but this metaphorical servant, a super righteous person, not as in self-righteous, as in haughty and tells everybody how it should be and looks down and kind of has a nose up in the air, but this righteous in the eyes of the Lord servant. In Isaiah 49, we learn a little bit more about this servant. This servant will bring salvation to the entire earth, which is a strange message coming from the Hebrew Bible because in the Hebrew Bible, it's about God's chosen people. It's like talk about a downshift. You know, when you're going along with a new driver and they go from fifth to fourth gear for some reason on the interstate, and you're feeling yourself do that, Isaiah is suddenly... <laughs> we got a new driver in our midst. <laughs> it's like Isaiah is sneaking in a little message to say, hey, listen, folks, God wants everybody. That's everybody, including us. And then in Isaiah 50, we have this third servant song. And what a brilliant song it is. God called me a teacher. God opened my heart. And I didn't turn away. I gave myself to those who struck me. Whew. That's hard. I mean, that is really hard. Put pride on the shelf. Listen to God. And go wherever you're led. The Lord helps me, and no matter how hard it gets, God vindicates. This is getting into verse 8, and let us stand together. The servant is not alone. And in verse 9, God helps me. The message is fairly clear. God speaks. God is engaged always, even in the darkest hour. God is still engaged with us, still speaking to us. And when we personalize it, and we don't look at these verses as archaic, far away, Old Testament, old, again, the answer being in the title. That's why I often refer to it as the Hebrew Bible, because I don't want to build in a prejudice. I'm reading from the Hebrew Bible today, not the Old Testament. I'm reading from the Testament that still speaks to us today. When we personalize it and make it about us and our lives and how we hear God speak, the verses are as much about how we didn't turn away. We continue to be open, continue to be faithful, continue to listen as it is about God speaking. We don't remain faithful alone. Verse 7 says, the Lord helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Because God will vindicate. We are called to walk by faith, even when the world around us seems to be in complete darkness. Hearing God means listening for the Holy Spirit and seeking this kind of guidance. Recognizing that we've been given this voice to speak, but the words we speak are not to be our own, they're to be God's. And it means coming to God with an open mind when we ask for guidance and we know what the outcome is going to be. And we know what we're going to do. Why ask? Why bother? Why even take the time to sit down and lay out the problem in prayer, speak it to God, and then say, we've talked about it. I'm going to go do what I'm going to do. Instead, we come to God open to hearing something different than what we previously expected. Now this morning... We began our worship with Psalm 19. The heavens are telling of the glory of the Lord. And when I began speaking, I talked about how we hear God in the different <coughs> places where we can experience God speaking. God is speaking. And we've all been, and I've said this lots of times now, given this gift of the tongue of being able to speak like a teacher but before we start yammering on and using our voices, the voice that God gave us, we would do well to listen, to truly open ourselves up to experience God and listen 
Where is God speaking to you today? What is God saying today? Is the Lord saying to be more spiteful, revengeful, saying to get even and so on? No, those voices come from within us. They come from our own evil desires. What is the Lord saying to us today? Be more gracious, be more loving, be more caring, more thoughtful. I don't know what God's saying to you. But we would do well to ask. And when we ask, we would do well to hear God, hear what God is truly saying. I invite you to listen to the Lord with me. Let us listen to God together. Will you?